Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to learn you some automation with one of my favorite tools, Zap. Now we're gonna learn some hacking, some hunting, but also some automation for when you prefer to do some pen testing. As you can see, I've been trying something already. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but we all know that Zap is different than Burp Suite, for example. It's just the case. Now, Zap has a different mentality. For example, on screen you see what Zap thinks is important for you to see at that moment. I have a fuzzer open, I see a fuzzer. I have active scan open, I see active scan. But if I don't have those open, if I don't have those running or if I don't have any results from those, I'm not going to be able to see those. Second of all, Zap works based on contexts. And in your context, you're going to set your scope. Now it's really not that hard. All you do is include in context and if you have the HTTPS website, you just type HTTPS and then if you have the HTTP website, you add that as well. You can just copy that or you can use regular expressions to do HTTP dot I think it is and then uh, it's gonna be like that. So if we modify that, I think this is going, the S is going to be replaced, but no, no, no. I don't know regular expressions well enough. I am gonna, just gonna freaking add that as a duplicate. So I'm not gonna care too much about that. I'm just gonna add it like this. And that's how I'm going to hack as well. Second of all, go through all of this when you start up, set up your context properly. Really important because as we go through, you will see all of these things that are probably standard, but then you have your authentication. Now, what should Zap do for, for authentication? Can it do uh, form-based authentication, for example? Do you have the URL? If you've already been exploring a little bit, you can even select the URL to log in. For example, I think I have Hexpert on here. Yep, on quite a few levels, hexpert.com. Let's go to RatSite. I think I have RatSite in here, and then there's a login form in there. So we go to this. This is the URL for the login form. Then we have the get for that page, the login post request data. In that case, we need to look what is requested. It's going to be username, password. So let's do this, for example, let's do this, select. There we go. Everything else is gonna be selected now. Remember to select your post there. I did that wrong, I selected my get. Remember to select your post there. It will automatically fill all of this in with the username and password from a request that it's made. Can you still change that? Of course, because in users, you're going to tell it which users you have. Like for example, administrator gonna be admin, admin, test user, test, test. You know, add those users, do that authentication because we're gonna see later, that's gonna be mwah, majorly handy. Let's do forced users, not really important in this case. I'm not gonna explain too much about that. Session management based on cookies can also be based differently. HTTP authentication is script based. Right now we're going to leave that as default cookie based. Authorization, I don't really change too much about that. But now we come to a plugin called Access Control. And my friends, this thing is amazing. I might even split this video up into a few parts because Access Control is really freaking cool. What I can do here is I have different users. And as I add different users, I can tell for each of these things what a user is supposed to do. So let's say that by default, I'm going to deny everything here. That means everything is gonna be denied by default for unauthenticated users. It's probably not the case in this case because we know that a lot of these things are gonna be allowed and some of them just aren't. For example, the get invoices with a search term should definitely be denied. Uh, if we get invoices, that should definitely be denied. So that no matter what we put in here, even if it's allowed, this is not gonna say, okay, you're allowed to do this resource. No, we explicitly told it you're denied from this resource. Later on, when we run, you're going to see, oh, it's going to flag that, of course. Because as we go, we can also see custom pages and alert filters, not really interesting. Okay, we have our context now. So let's do that access control thing, right? Because we've set everything up. Uh, my, my zap is being annoying, but that's okay. Sometimes the UI glitches out. Let's just not, uh, let's just not worry about that too much. Uh, if it will please cooperate, I would highly appreciate that. Uh, apparently it's not going to. So I'm going to pause the recording for a second and I'll get back to you when Zap is operational again. 
All right, my friends, I've added something that I should have added before, of course. Now, here I added some users and I also added my keyboard to my computer, which might make things a little bit easier. So let's just add these users. We're going to click OK. Of course, Zap is going to be annoying again, but we have those users now. OK, there we go. So it just takes a little bit longer. I have to take that into account because my computer, apparently it doesn't like all these things at once. I might need to upgrade. So thank you very much for giving me the chance to do that. Now, where am I talking to you? You might be wondering. There's a few cameras here, so that's why I might splice them together. I might not. We will see. Let's talk about access control for now. So let's talk about that context that we've set. We have different users for that, but I want to go back to that context for just one second because I want to look at that authorization access control page that we have again because now I can see that I have for example a test user and there might be some pages in here where I might not be allowed access as that test user for example he might not have access to context so it should be denied it should be denied for context as well here so there we go we have context denied context Jesus uh, let's go let's save that and we want to go and we want to run as fast as possible so we're going to set up our access control and we're going to start now it's going to ask us which users do you want to include let's include everyone and let's also include authenticated now I'm going to tell you guys this takes longer to set up in the beginning because you have to walk your entire application and you have to know which parts are accessible by administrators, by test users, by low privilege users, etc. You really need to know that. And here you have raise alerts for identified issues. So if you find anything, then raise an alert at the high informational, low or medium level. Let's take high for a moment and let's start. There we go. So here we can see I'm going to go to my context real quick, going to go over those users. So I've added those users. As you can see, enabled is true, so it's going to ask for those users. And here we already have some results because normally we shouldn't be able to see this, but it's going to give us some error sometimes. It's going to give us the access rules denied or true. Uh, and then it's going to also raise the alerts, which is exactly what we want. As you can see here, we have some issues popping up as high. And that is because I've set it up that that user shouldn't be able to access that specific resource, but they are able to access that resource. So that is a bad thing, of course. Now, when your access control thing is finished, I'm going to stop it right here. And you can also generate a report. That is important because you can send that to your to your admins, to your sys uh, uh, admins, to your to your DevOps guys. This is really important because you can send this report on. Do that. Just don't hesitate. Always include that in your reporting anyway. And that is access control. You can keep on rescanning over and over and over again, which makes this a really really useful tool to have. Of course. When I'm hunting, there are other alerts from the live scan that I can do. Let's say that, for example, I want to scan hexport.com. Well, I can really easily right click it, attack active scan. This is not allowed on most bug bounty programs, just so you know, but it's an option. It's in there. It's a pretty good active scan. Then we also have forced browse sites. So we can use this, for example, for the directory brute forcing. Let's see, we have a list, the directory list, we can use that. But we can also use our fuzzer, of course. It depends on how you set that up. Now, this is really important because this kind of attack, your forced browse site, your forced browse site directory, and you have your uh, children as well. You can launch these things while you do other things, while you hack along. You can also launch an Ajax Spider and Spider. Now, what's the difference between Force Browse Site and Spiders? Force Browse Site is going to do some uh, enumeration by brute forcing that. Browse Sites, bro we force it. We brute force that. Ajax Spiders are going to look for links to follow for uh, new pages to be discovered by the web page itself. Same for a regular spider. In this case, if you want to include something in your context, you can also really easily right click it and include it in your context. Just so you know, if you want to have a specific thing, like for example, here we have the admin login bypass screen. We might want to be uh, like change something in here, but as you can see, the request is kind of static. I cannot change anything in here. That's because I need to right click and I need to go to my request uh, editor. 
So in this case, it will open a new thing up here in the request editor. And then I can try that again. So again, that's just a right click. And then you can open that in your resend uh, with the request editor. Now I'm going to stop this scan because it's not really useful and it's probably killing my website. If you guys want to use Zap, try Hexpert.com. It's totally free. It's fucking awesome. And you guys are going to learn a lot, I promise. Now in here we have different types of attacks that we can try to do as well. Automated, non-automated. It, it kind of depends, of course. We have extra plugins, which are really freaking cool, by the way. But these active scans are going to help you a lot in automating certain things. You can also do that access control thing, which automatically scans website over and over again. Why is that important? Because I always tell you guys to make a privilege matrix. Now, if you guys want to learn more about these kind of tools, about how to use this, make sure that you leave a thumbs up and if you want to know more about zap there is going to be a link about a free zap course in the description below because i love you and i will see you later amazing hackers bye bye my friends see you later if i can find my end screen there we go bye friends bye bye